Hi everybody, welcome back to Fill Your Boots and the Pleb Tavern or the bar at the bottom of my garden as I promised in the last video I just thought I'd show you all the equipment that you need to brew your own ale you don't actually need all this to brew your own ale it's just everything that I've got but I'll go through it and I'll do a little bit of explaining um, I'm by no means an expert but I, I've, I've brewed quite a lot of ale so I'm an expert at drinking actually uh, so I'll just show you the kit and then uh, explain a little bit about it so you don't actually need all that that I've just showed you on that little sweep. Some of it's for wine, some of it's for beer, some of it is for alcohol testing that you don't actually need to do. But I use I use most of that all of the time. So I'll just um, I'll just go through it bit by bit and explain a little bit about about what it is and what you need it for. Just one note on the actual brewing. The most important thing is uh, keeping the bacteria out. If you get bacteria in your brew it's almost certainly going to spoil. Might still be safe, might still be drinkable but the odds are it's probably not going to taste very nice or it won't clear or there'll be, there'll be certain issues with it. It, it might be flat but uh, yeah it's, it's having clean equipment that's your most important thing but I'll, I'll speak about that a little bit as I'm, as I'm showing you the kit. So, what do you need to brew your own batch of beer, lager, bitter, whatever it is you're brewing? Probably the most important thing, some people wouldn't say this, but I, I do, the most important thing is is the kit to clean it. So this is this is really simple, it's just it's just a bowl uh, that I put a solution in the scrubbing things just normal looks like household things and they are just normal household things but once 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 these are brewing equipment they stay brewing equipment I wouldn't I wouldn't use this to clean my brewing equipment and then go and clean dishes with it and bring it back I wouldn't clean anything home brew and then go and clean the barbecue with it and then bring it back once it's own brew it's own brew um, and there's a reason for that like I've already said the introduction of bacteria is the one most important thing that you've got to get right if you introduce bacteria into your into your brewing one way or another you're probably going to spoil your batch whether that's taste cloudiness it might even go off it might not be drinkable it might be drinkable but it might not taste very good so it's 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 ultimately important that you keep everything clean so first of all you clean everything that you've got whether it's whether it's the things that you clean with need to be clean uh, that's just a, a scrubbing bush but obviously that goes in in the top of the barrel and if you've got glasses and you're reusing them or wine bottles you're reusing them that's what you use this for to clean everything you use this is just what I use for a stirrer um, I have got another stirrer but it's not very long so this is just cable conduit brand new it's never been used as cable conduit and it stays with my own brew everything stays with my own brew and that's long enough to get to the bottom of the barrel this barrel behind me I'm going to show you now um, so everything you use gets cleaned with soapy water once it's cleaned with soapy water you rinse it and then you um, sanitize it you can buy sanitizing tablets for own brew you can use the the baby bottle ones how you can buy tablets and sanitize your, your baby's feeding bottles they're exactly the same as own brew so you can use them once i've cleaned and sanitized everything it all goes inside this so once it's sanitized i pop everything inside there and then i, I close the lid till next time 
what I do is I'll, I'll clean and sanitize everything once I've done a brew put it all inside here then when I do a brew again I'll I'll do exactly the same thing so I'll I'll clean and sanitize this again and put everything back in there then bit by bit I, I start the brew so that is where you actually brew the beer 23 litres on the front there's a reason for that I'll show you in a minute when I show you the brew kit that, that's the main um, the main volume of what you brew 23 litres or 40 pints that's where everything brews so on top of this you'll see there's a little hole um, what's that, what that's for is this thing so when you brew let me show you the beer first let me show you the beer so 40 pints of lager you can buy these from any any shop I don't advertise but you can see where I get mine from they're pretty good I've, ne I've never been really let down I've never brewed lager before so this is the first time for me trying lager I've brewed um, a few different bitters I've brewed loads of wine and I'm, I'm quite chuffed with our brew wine it, people usually like it so 40 packs of lager the most important thing in this is the instructions I probably read these, even though I know how to do it, I probably read these 10, 12 times along the way just to make sure I'm not missing anything. The thing is with once you start brewing, if you forget a stage, you can't go back, you've lost it. It's the full 40 pints and it's it bring your tea to your eye if you pour 40 pints down the drain. So I just make sure I follow all the steps. If you don't use that, there's a quick guide on, on the back of most of um, the ingredients anyway so this is like a syrup in here and then you add the yeast the yeast I'm hoping is in the top of the yeah so there's the yeast that'll go in as part of your brew but we'll come on to that when we actually brew it put the instructions in there so I know where they are and then some don't need sugar some need a lot of sugar this particular one only needs one kilo of sugar uh, this is brewing sugar it's a lot it's a lot finer than uh, normal granulated sugar so I always for the I think it's 190 195 for that I'd sooner pay a little bit extra for that and get a better brew so I'd recommend that as I was saying this is by the time it's in the brew I'll just show you the equipment now and then as I do the brew I'll explain a lot more when it's brewing you need to, it needs to be airlocked but it will create when you put the yeast in it can create a lot of excess air that needs to escape so this is two parts you are fill it with water just normal potable water uh, pop that in and leave it loose and then as the air escapes inside turn it around and you see it actually in there's a seal in the top of this this will bubble um, needs to be temperature controlled what I found is doing this in my living room or my kitchen annoys the hell out of me annoys the hell out of the missus so I've got now what's called a brewing cabinet it's basically an under counter fridge and um, it's temperature controlled but I'll show you that as well in a little bit so there's that one or there's another one that you'll probably recognize more i'm preferring this one at the minute but this is one that you recognize more exactly the same you need to drill a bigger hole uh, and then that sits in i fill it with water and then you, you can actually the kids usually like this one better because you can see the water the, the air go up down and it can bubble 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 and then it goes um, and the kids sit there and watch that they like it so either one air locks either one of them You've got the brewing barrel. Once the brewing is is done, you brew it um, for the specified time, what it says, and then you might taste it after a certain amount. If it usually, if it tastes sweet, you um, you carry on brewing it for, for for a couple of days. I always do it a couple of days longer than it says on the instructions. Anyway, to get it from that, let me just move it. into this which is your barrel where you dispense it from you can see there just a normal tap nearly dropped it uh, that 
that tap comes off and when I sanitised, I'll sanitise this, I'll sanitise the tap, um, open the tap, run it through, this cap, this is a release cap, that's all, it won't, it won't allow you to actually put um, gas in there and when I'm doing the lager I need that, so the next stage of that is to use something like this. So that's exactly the same as that, only it allows you to put gas into the barrel. And I can demonstrate that. I'm not gonna waste some gas, but I can I can demonstrate how it works. So bring your beer, put it in this, add temperature, put it in this, bring it down to temperature, again in my brewing cabinet, and then from the um, you keep it in there chilled until it's clear or ready to drink. This contraption goes on the top and then we have these little gas canisters. You can get big ones, you can get a, a three foot can of gas, it's CO2. That basically just goes in, if I take it off and show you properly, that will go in there and then screw it on. I'm not going to screw it on because if I screw it too far it will break the seal and I'll just waste the gas, it will just go inside and come out the tap so that's how that works, they cost, I don't know, 10 of them in there, they probably cost 4 quid, 5 quid for 10 of them. As, as I'm brewing in the cabinet um, it needs to be temperature controlled so let me move this out of the way. I'm sure there's plenty of others on the market, but this is what I use. It's called the Inkbird. Uh, Smart Ohm Temperature Control System, which if I put this down, I'll show you. You can get these that just plug in. You can also get these that are Wi-Fi, which I don't need that much control uh, because I just I basically come in and check on it every night. So what that is, is a thermostat which is this, if I, if I can plug it in you'll see it, it could probably alarm when I plug it in so there you go, that's alarming from the last settings just get rid of the alarm so you, you set your temperature and you set your alarm you set it, if I want the temperature to be 20 degrees I set my alarm to 20.5 degrees and the lower alarm to 19.5 degrees if it, if it breaches any of those targets then you can alarm the beauty of the Wi-Fi is it can send you a text message it can alarm in your pocket and you can see it if you're out or you have a power cord and it goes out then then you can come home and sort it out but for me um, I, I, I don't need that I'm here every day this is a probe so what you do is you plug this in let me just unplug it You'll see one of them says cooling and the other one of them says heating. So inside my fridge or cooling cabinet I've got a tube heater and it's also a fridge. So whatever temperature I set this to it will maintain that temperature. It'll, it'll either turn the fridge off and the heater on or turn the heater off and the on the fridge on it will maintain that temperature and how it, how it knows that is this probe you can either drill another hole in your barrel and put that in I don't, I'll just run this through, through the cabinet and attach it to the side but again you'll see all this in the next video um, I think that's all the kit that, that I've got to show you at the minute I have, I have certain things like this is, this is for the uh, uh, original measuring that's stainless steel, it doesn't have to be stainless steel as long as it's clean and sanitised. As I'm doing things, so if I use this, uh, it's not here because these are my key rings, me, me buckle openers, sorry some of them are key rings. There's hooks behind me, so rather than, rather than put it down, do something, oh I need that again, pick it up, you've already put it down on the table, that's not sanitised, so you're introducing bacteria. It sounds like you're doing okay, some people will do a brew and the fingers will touch the beer, 
it's really important that when I sanitise everything that I get my hands in there, I want my hands to be as sanitised as possible and I don't go and touching things. So in between using it, I hang it up. And it's not touching anything, it's not touching the surface, it's just in the air. And if I need it again, use it and hang it up again. One last thing that I need to show you is this hydrometer. So what this does, if you see people with home brew and they say that's 5.2, that's 4.1, this is how you measure it. So you need to do two measurements. You need to take a measurement as soon as you put it in the brewing and do a measurement with this. You have to be careful with these because the glass, and again I'll come on to it when we when we do the brew, but there's, there's um, all, the, all the targets that you need on there and then you do it again when it's ready to drink and then you do a cal sorry a calculation and that will give you the ABV percentage so the volume you buy a can of lager and it's four percent bottle of wines 12 and a half 13 percent this is how you this is how you find out what what percentage your beer is so that's it I'll just I'll just show you quickly the um, the temperature cabinet the brewing cabinet and then and then the next video will be me actually brewing so uh, let's go and show you that okay we're now behind the bar excuse the flashing lights let me see if I can turn them off there we go so this is a fridge a normal under counter fridge it's it used to be a fridge, it's now my brewing cabinet. I'll try my best with this video in. But I'm only one hand. So, there you go. All the shelves, all the little plastic door compartments have gone. Um, and that is now a brewing cabinet. There's a piece of wood there. It, that used to be like the plastic pulling drawer. Um, not strong enough to put 40 pints of beer on so that easily holds it that's just a piece of very thick ply that I've cut to shape and then the barrel sits in there um, this thing is just a heater it's just a tube heater and this sits on the bottom behind behind the barrels in on the top it then comes out and the fridge itself and the heater plug into the thermostat that I've already showed you call the ink bird so once it's set at whatever temperature I want it 20 degrees 24 25 degrees I can then walk away and the ink bird does everything I have brewed a lot I've brewed wine and beer uh, both like in on the kitchen table that's taking space from in the house and it also does get quite annoying it's it's a it's it's okay at first but after after four five six days and it's constant this bubbling and you wake up in the middle of the night you can hear it from upstairs so this is a much better way of doing it so that is what a, a brewing cabinet a temperature cabinet is and uh, it's brilliant you can put it in there forget about it you actually never have to open it and you can just the the the, the, the display goes on on the side here and you can actually look at the display on the side and know what temperature the beer is in just by looking at that so yeah it's good and it works and it's also when you've put it in the dispensing barrel the, the second barrel i showed you you can bring it right down i think i, I did my last one on this too it was middle of summer and i had it on one percent 0.5 percent and i achieved one percent inside the barrel so it was ice cold and it was really nice in summer um you'll see down here there's another hole that is actually for the beer line so the pump on the on the bar this is the one that i used for my last brew which was a beer and then at the side of that is a strong ball pump which i'll be using for this lager 
uh, non return valve and then this is the beer line so this beer line is, has got cleaning solution in it but it comes out of this clean solution and goes into the and then connects to um, the barrel and it's as simple as that it dispenses all you've got to do is if you don't keep an eye on the gas it will end up not having enough gas in and you'll be creating back pressure which means all the sediment in the bottom of the barrel will come up and, and you, you can't drink the beer for a couple of days while it settles again so as long as you keep changing the little, little gas canisters on, on top then it's fine it will carry on dispensing perfectly works out about 45 50 pence a pint so what is it in pubs now where I live it's about three pound three pound fifty uh, if you're down south it's more fiver six pound a pint and I pay 45 50 pound. and I actually enjoy brewing I enjoy doing the brew it's not like a chore that I've got to do to get that cheap beer I actually enjoy doing it I look forward to the first beer so just turn you around and then explain about what's going to be in the next video so cheers uh, that's good so one thing I didn't mention while I was showing the equipment is this uh, siphon when you transfer your beer from the fermenting barrel into the dispensing barrel where you actually drink it from this is how you do it it's a it's a regular siphon you could siphon petrol diesel from a car with this you can siphon everything with it but as I've said the golden rule once this is an own brew piece of equipment it stays an own brew piece of equipment when I sanitize everything I actually draw some sanitizer through this and leave it in this to, to clean all around inside it um, I do it with the tap open and with the tap closed so that even the connections inside is sanitized some people will just do that and then take it away but then inside here there's a there's a piece of the tap that hasn't been in connection with the sanitizer and then you'll open it and you'll introduce bacteria that's the, that's I know I keep going on but that's the one most important part of brewing you introduce bacteria you're going to spoil your beer uh, you might get lucky and not spoil one beer but you you're going to spoil more than you don't and if you introduce bacteria so it's really important and once you once you pull that first pint and start to enjoy it that's when it's all the hard work and all the extra steps and all the extra cleaning that's when it becomes worth it so next video uh, I'm going to go away and do everything I've just told you you have to do. I'm going to go away and sanitise everything that will be today. I'm going to do it and then and then probably this Saturday or Sunday I'll actually put the brew on. So uh, I'll show you as much of that as I can. I won't show you the actual sanitising because I take it down the house and do it in the sink or, or the bath or, or wherever I can. I, I create an environment where I sanitise everything put it into the barrel and then you'll see me starting that stage uh, putting it in mixing it uh, and then putting it in the cabinet I'll close the cabinet door and then part three after that will be in ten days seven ten days when I show you when I show you the next stage which is using this bringing it over to the dispensing back into the into the cabinet and bringing it down to temperature to clear um, if it doesn't clear one thing I, I, I could show you is is this beer finings so that will help it literally a couple of drops of that that will help you be able to clear if it doesn't clear um, doesn't always work it helps a little bit it's not it's not a portion it's not a miracle worker uh, but it, sometimes if you've got an haze and you don't want a haze that that will clear it um, and then just one last thing
So everything I've just showed you is for brewing. You can do you can do beer or wine with all that. But this is this is you've probably seen these. Uh, this is called the Demijohn. So that's exactly the same uh, process as what I've just used. But you, you brew your wine in one of these, and then you can either leave it in these uh, or put it in in wine bottles from these. In the garage, I've got four, five carrier bags with. 30 bottles of wine in, 30 bottles, I wish that's not yeah, 30 empty bottles that I used to have wine in, and um, it comes from these. These will cost you probably £5 each buying them new. I've just come across um, uh, 11 or 14 of these on on free cycle I'm sure most of you know what free cycle is a very kind gentleman very nice gentleman as well with me and the partner went and picked these up um, and I I have promised and I will stand by my word that when I brew my wine which will be in for Christmas this gentleman will get half a dozen bottles left on his doorstep um, I know I look a little bit like Santa but he will get a few bottles of wine left because because he 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 could have sold these he decided to give them away and I was the lucky person that was there first uh, to to pick them up from him. Not only that, there was I've got a tub with some other equipment in for wine brewing. So that's what's coming. Uh, I hope I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got something out of it. I wish I, I I'm. I'm not a, a nipper, I'm not that young, um, YouTube wasn't about when I did my first brew, I, I wish it was because I would have got a lot of hints and tips, I've wasted a lot of beer, a lot of wine, if I'd have had this technology I'm sure I would have wasted a lot less, so I hope you've got something from this, if you haven't, if there's anything you think I've missed, if there's any questions you want to ask just put it down in the comments. Um, and the usual YouTube rigmarole, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button so everybody who's friends with you can see it and if you put the notifications on then it will flag up when I put part 2 video on but make sure you subscribe, it, it really is appreciated. Uh, before I was a YouTuber I didn't really pay much attention to it but it really is appreciated so make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in part 2. Okey doke. Fill your boots.